almost all other ideas about what knowledge is and, and how and to what extent it can be objective are related in some way to the original idea found in Plato, that knowledge is justified true belief. Even if knowledge is not defined in this way, there will be elements of certainty or of belief, the subjective standard, and justified, the infallible standard. I take issue with all those ideas in my post, Seeking Truth, which you can find on my website. First, let us consider the most in vogue epistemology at the moment that goes by the name Bayesian epistemology. There is a website called Less Wrong, and Less Wrong is the go-to website for Bayesianism, at least for a broad brush understanding of it. No lesser an academic than Steven Pinker, in his book Rationality, defers in a sense to the articles in Less Wrong, and everything he says in his book there basically accords with what is said on the website Less Wrong. Let's quote what they say in one of their articles. They say, quote, the core claim behind all varieties of Bayesianism is that probabilities are subjective degrees of belief, often operationalized as willingness to bet, end quote. Okay, so there we have it. Now, to be fair, the word knowledge doesn't even appear there, but the central idea can't be ignored. Bayesianism is something to do with probability and something to do with subjective interpretations. Very well, we're not getting objectivity. But in another article on Less Wrong by Karj Satola, which is titled, What is Bayesianism? We read something called Core Tenant One, and I'll quote what Core Tenant One is. Quote, any given observation has many different possible causes. End quote. We might quibble over whether any given observation has one possible cause, but we may have many different possible guesses about the one possible cause, so there might already be some ambiguity or confusion about knowing some cause and the cause in itself. Whatever the case is, we go on to read in the article, quote, Suppose you had to choose between two competing scientific theories about the motion of planets. A theory about the laws of physics governing the motion of planets devised by Sir Isaac Newton or a theory simply stating that the flying spaghetti monster pushes the planets forward with his noodly appendage. If these theories made the same predictions, you'd have to depend on your prior knowledge, your prior for short, to judge which one was more likely. And even if they didn't make the same predictions, you'd need some prior knowledge which told you which of the predictions were better or that the predictions matter in the first place, as opposed to, say, theoretical elegance." End quote. So firstly, notice that the author calls both of these competing scientific theories. Of course, the flying spaghetti monster is not a scientific theory. It makes no testable claims. It is a bad explanation because it's too easy to vary. Why is it a flying spaghetti monster and not a noodle monster or a fettuccine monster? Well, not a monster at all, but an angel and so on ad infinitum. It's too easy to vary. What is it referring to in reality that's actually causing the gravitational effect? And what is said there is that we all have to depend on our prior to judge which is more likely. No, it seems we simply rule one out as a bad explanation. We never have to say Newton's is more likely. The fact is, Newton's, given that choice, is the only explanation. The other is a non-explanation and gives us no useful information. And in fact, in reality, of course, and let's talk about reality, we're talking about accurate predictions, which no other random theory can give us. To get accurate predictions about the world, we need to have an accurate explanation to some extent about the world. And as for some prior probability, well, forget it. It's not probably correct. It's false. But this is Bayesianism as its adherents express it. As the very same article goes on to say in Core Tenant 3, quote, we can use the concept of probability to measure our subjective belief in something. Furthermore, we can apply the mathematical laws regarding probability to choosing between different beliefs. If we want our beliefs to be correct, we must do so." End quote. Again, what is the probability of Newton's theory of gravity being correct? Well, it's zero as Eddington's experiment shows. Should we believe it? No, we should not. It's false but we can use it and we can call it knowledge. The theory is useful, as well as false, independent of any subjective claim we make. This is all objective. It objectively works to some degree of accuracy. It objectively fails in some situations. 
Knowledge is not about belief. Knowledge can be false as well as contain truth. There's no problem of logic here, by the way. This is logical. If I have a logical conjunction of two claims, A, which is true, and B, which is false, then the logical conjunction, A and B, is strictly logically false. But it contains some truth, namely the truth that's in A. Which is what we are saying about Newton's theory. And what we presume is the case for all theories, all knowledge. They contain some truth. And the more truth they contain, the better they represent and explain reality. And the more problems they solve. But even one iota of falsehood, logically, makes the whole thing false. But there are degrees of falsity. But that one iota, we should expect in every theory. And that means we should expect all of our knowledge to contain misconceptions. But that doesn't make it any less useful and closer to representing reality.